Hey guys, we are so excited that you are joining us for 21 days of prayer. And we're kicking off um, tonight just because what we want to do is say like, hey, here's what the next couple weeks are going to look like for us because we know and we trust and believe <clears throat> that when the church body gathers for prayer, something happens. We believe that our God's relational. We believe that our God responds. He's over all things. He holds all things. But at the same time, he desires relationship. Why? Which is why prayer is so crucial. And when the church comes together unified in prayer, there's a whole different level to that. So that's why we've been doing 21 days of prayer the last couple of years. It's a chance for us as a church to buy into the rhythms of engaging our God because he longs to hear from us and know us and speak to us. So here are a few things right off the bat. First off, we're kicking off 21 days. We're going to be posting every day prayer points and scripture for you to engage. So you can go to the app and check it out there. You could also be a part of any of our social media stuff because we're going to be pushing this and just engage when you can. Find a way to be a part of it. I would encourage you kind of get get your setup. You know what I mean? Get your, your coffee or your tea get your journal. I'm a journaler, so I love, I have to think with my hand and writing. Get your Bible, find your space, find your time, and then be devoted to this. Create a habit of prayer. Create a habit of coming and getting to know the Lord better and listening to Him as well. And all of these resources, again, are on the app, but also uh, you can go to CompassionChristian.com backslash 21 days. We're going to put a bunch of resources. I'm going to give you some of those things right now, but you're going to get the full extent of those things on your own, on, on the app and, and online as well. So real quick, if you have a Bible, uh, go ahead and get it. Go to Psalm 23. This passage has been such an instrumental chapter in my personal journey over the last few months. Um, and so I'm actually really excited about sharing with you uh, from Psalm 23 because what, what it shows me is not only who we are um, in relationship with Jesus, but it also shows me what spiritual disciplines are like. And if you're not familiar with that word, spiritual disciplines are these practices and habits of reading scripture and praying and fasting and silence and solitude and Sabbath. You see these disciplines all throughout scripture. Um, and so 21 days for us is engaging in this historical practice of, of buying into the rhythms of the Spirit. And so that's why studying the Scriptures is such an important thing for us. That's why prayer is such an important thing for us. So um, if you haven't got your Bible yet, I'm going to read this. And here's the thing. I want you to listen to these words like for the first time. You know what I mean? Psalm 23 is one of those um, just foundational passages like there are people who have been in, in the darkest places of their life and they turn to this passage and they find comfort in it it's almost like after reading and sitting in this passage for many people it's like you can get your head above water and you can finally breathe because you understand some of the truths from this passage so i want to invite you read with me psalm 23 and then i'm going to give you a picture of what these disciplines have become for me Listen again, first time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means our God is, is our shepherd. He's the one who takes care of us. He's the one who guides us. He's the one who leads us. And, and as we are close to the shepherd, it's saying we're not going to be lacking anything. We're not going to be wanting for anything. And so... In, in, in its simplest form, he's the shepherd, we're the sheep. What do sheep do? Follow. Follow the shepherd. Stay close to the shepherd, and then you get what comes next. Look at some of the things that happen because you and I say, all right, I'm going to follow my shepherd. Here's what comes. Ready? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Listen to this. He restores my soul. All of us are wanting to know how do we find wholeness? How do we find restoration? How do we find this satisfaction of the soul? What it says is he does that. He's the one who restores the soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, 
this is where it gets even better. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Listen to that. If, if we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, there is a way in which we walk through that place free of fear. There's a way in which we can walk through the scariest, darkest moments of our lives free from fear. Why? Because we've stayed close to the shepherd. We've stayed near to him. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? You are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Your rod um, is one of those things that it was to defend from um, evil or defend more so from you know, creatures, you know, wolves and lions and bears coming after the sheep. It was a protective thing. The staff is kind of interesting because the staff is how the shepherd would rescue his sheep if they got caught in the water or discipline his sheep if they were not acting right. You know what I mean? So the rod and staff, they both comfort us. They protect us from what's on the outside, but they also protect us from ourselves. That's what a good shepherd does. He knows how to discipline. He knows how to protect. He knows where he's going. So stay close to the shepherd. Here's what happens. Ready? And it even gets better. Listen to this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Enemies could be physical enemies, right? They could be people against you, circumstances that seem against you. They could be things like fear or anxiety, they could be all, all kind of things. But here's, listen to what our Lord Jesus is saying to us. He's saying, regardless of where you are, regardless of what you're walking through, I'm coming and I'm preparing a table before you because you have to eat. You have to be satisfied. You have to get, your soul must be restored. And so regardless of what's happening in our lives, Jesus says, I'm coming and I've prepared a table before you and all you have to do, come to the table. All you have to do, come, eat, experience life with me. He's the one who provides for us. So this is for me where um, I've, I've just rediscovered what these disciplines actually do. These spiritual disciplines are not like things that like a checklist. Okay, I've got to do my prayer time. I did it. Do my scripture time. Okay, I've, I've done that now. Now I've got to do this. And it can, it can become like a task-driven thing. And if I'm not careful, I can allow my own guilt to get in the way and go, man, I'm not measuring up to all these rules. I'm not doing this right. Jesus is saying, don't look at it like that. Look at these disciplines like scripture and prayer. And, and fasting and Sabbath and silence and solitude. Look at these things like a table. Jesus has said, I've prepared a place in which you and I can have a relationship. I've prepared a table where you can eat and be satisfied and filled up. The question is, are you going to keep coming to the table? Are you going to eat? Are you going to be satisfied in what Jesus provides for us? The invitation with these disciplines, the invitation with this 21 days of prayer is that Jesus has set a table before us in the presence of this virus, in the presence of this pandemic, in the presence of all other normal rhythms of life being thrown out. He says, I've prepared a table before you in the presence of all this stuff. Come and eat. Come and be with me. And I will lead you, I will guide you, I will restore you, I will protect you. Think of all these things that happen. That's where these disciplines are for me. Now, look at how he wraps this up. He says, I anoint, uh, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. That's just the nature of being in a relationship with Jesus. He doesn't just give you enough. He, he gives you more than you need. He provides more than is possible. He's capable of doing more than you think is imaginable. And look, here's the thing. If you follow the shepherd, here's what follows you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall pursue me. Goodness and mercy pursues you as you are pursuing the shepherd. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That picture is, I'm going to keep coming back to this place. I'm going to return back and dwell with you because there's so much here for us. So the invitation is come to the table, be with him, eat what he provides, be satisfied in that. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a chance to enter into some personal prayer right now. And I want you to reflect on this question with me, okay? Because we just heard Jesus is our shepherd. All right, he's the shepherd. Now here's the question. What are some other characteristics about Jesus? What are some other things about who he is, what he does, how he shows up in your life? We're going we're gonna to go into a song right now. And as we're going through this song, I want to invite you, pray through this song. Or if you're like me, you got a journal. Maybe you're like, write out the, the answers to this question. What are some characteristics about Jesus? Write these things out during this song. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you a chance to think about another way in which we can come to the table. You know, in Mark chapter 9, uh, there's a really interesting story. You know, it starts with Jesus and a few of his key disciples that he've kind of, he's invited into this inner circle, so to speak. He's invited them to pray with him. And it's the story we know of the transfiguration, right? It's, it's where Jesus kind of peels back the curtain, so to speak, on his divinity. And all of a sudden we realize, oh my goodness, Jesus is fully man and fully God. And so, you know, Peter, he's trying to figure out what to do. And so he's like, let's, should we set up some tents here and hang out? And Jesus is like, no, you're missing the whole point. But here's what happens. So they spend this evening in prayer on the mountain. All right. And then they come back and all of a sudden Jesus hears this interesting situation from this father who was saying, your disciples were trying to heal my son and they couldn't heal him. And, and so Jesus comes to the boy and is able to heal him right away. And so afterwards, the, the other disciples who were trying, they had, they'd healed people before because of the power of Jesus, but for some reason it wasn't working right now. And they come to Jesus afterwards, I'm assuming a little embarrassed and a little ashamed going, what happened? Why was it, why was it different this time? And Jesus said there are certain situations that are only possible through prayer and other translations include prayer and fasting. He's saying there's certain situations that require a different level of intensity on our own. And so that's why fasting has become such a huge part of the spiritual disciplines for us. And, and notably, like right now, there's a global crisis going on. So of course, the church should come together and intensify our prayers and be united around saying like, God, we need you to show up, not just to get rid of this virus, but to show us what you're doing. Show us where you're leading us. And we want to trust you and follow you. Wherever you're taking us, we know it's the best thing. But we need to intensify our own prayers, which means we need to be listening more and we need to be engaging more in what he has for us. But a way of intensifying our prayers is something historically called fasting. All right. And again, on the resources, you can go check and, and we've provided some of those. You can read along and go, oh, this is what fasting looks like. And we've given you some examples of what that is. But in short, fasting is simply giving up something for something or someone you love more. Giving up something like food to discover the goodness and the power of Jesus. You're giving up food because you're saying Jesus is enough. All right. You're giving up social media or you're giving up some other things because you're saying Jesus is enough. I want more of him. That's why we engage in the practice of fasting. And let me give you uh, um, two helpful tips about fasting because if you've never done this, I would say kind of start small and try something. Okay, during this 21 days of prayer, why don't you try something like I'm going to give up lunch on Thursdays for the next three weeks, or I'm going to give up breakfast every day, or I'm going to try a full 24 hour fast or, you know, pick something small and, and engage and try it. But as you take this step, here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about um, focus on a prayer. When you jump into fasting, be really clear about what it is you're praying for. For some of us, we might have a particular relationship in our family or relationship in our circle that we're just saying like, this is not, th this relationship is dysfunctional and it's hurting our family. And so for you, you, the prayer might be, God, in the next 21 days, could you show up in this person's life? 
use me in this person's life, bring someone into this person's life so that they might get to see you and experience life in you because it would change everything for them and it would change everything for us and our family. You know, whatever it is you're going through, for some of you, again, you're, you're business owners and you're going, what am I supposed to do with my business? And so for the next 21 days, say, you know what, I'm going to give up this and every day I'm going to pray for my employees or every day I'm going to pray for my, the leaders in my particular employment so that they have the wisdom that they need to get through this. You know, whatever it is, just make sure you start with being focused about why you're praying. Because if you don't, all of a sudden, after you've done it a little while, you'll get distracted and you'll start to go, wait, why am I doing this again? I'm just doing this because, you know, some pastor told me to try it out, you know. But so be focused in your prayer. Here's the second thing. Abstain from something. OK, that's a fancy word for saying um, don't do something right. Don't eat or, or give up food, give up social media, give up screen time, give up whatever. Um, I would say maybe not social media right now while we're trying to engage and connect virtually because this is kind of what we have right now. But there's some things you can give up like Netflix. You could say for 21 days, I'm not going to be streaming or binge watching any of these series. I'm going to intentionally pursue Christ. I'm going to say, I don't need those things. What I need is more of Jesus. And so I want to invite you, focus your prayer and abstain from something and then just try it. Okay, sometimes it's helpful to invite a friend into this with you because that accountability is really valuable. Uh, but at the same time with fasting, you don't boast about this. It's, it's actually one of those things where... Um, you know how there are certain relationships in your life that you have secrets between each other and that exclusive secrecy is actually what makes that relationship intimate and, and kind of more special? There are some things that Jesus teaches about that are like, these are secrets between us and Him. And so like any special relationship, this is a practice where it's like, this is a us thing, me and Jesus thing. And, and we're going to be having conversations and walking through this. And so what I want to invite you to do is um, we're going to go into another song. Uh, and again, these songs can be prayers for you. So pray through some of these songs as you hear them. Um, but I want to invite you to ask this question during your prayer time. Ask, if God could do one thing over the next 21 days, what would it be? If he could show up in your life, in a significant way, if he could, you know, rescue someone, if he could break some kind of barrier, if he could open your eyes to something, if he could, if, if there's something that he could do over the next 21 days, what would you hope he would do? How would you like to see him show up in your life? So during this song, pray through that question, write it down, think of some of those things, because that could be the focus that you need for the next 21 days as we're doing this together. All right, so listen, as we, as we wrap up this time, I want to get really practical because at this point, you're going to be on your own or with your family or with your group, however this works uh, for you. But every day, you're just going to, need to make the decision to engage and be a part of this. And so, again, here's how I would do it if I were in your shoes. I would find my chair, okay? This is every morning at this particular time. This is my chair. Um, I'm a coffee guy. Um, and so I would have like, here's my, I got my coffee, I've got my journal, my Bible, and I'm going to engage. And, and so we're going to, again, put all the passages for each day up every day on social media. But if you have the app, you can go ahead and follow along and build your plan for the weeks uh, based on that. But I would get my journal out and I would read the passages that we, that we post. And then I would follow a simple journal um, outline to help you kind of chew on the scriptures as they come. And it's a simple outline called SOAP. All right, so S-O-A-P, SOAP. Here's what it means. S stands for scripture. What is the scripture passage that you're reading? Uh, but as you're reading, here's what is super important. Pay attention to the words or the phrases, or if you're reading a long passage, what particular verse um, stands out to you. Sometimes the Lord makes you go like, pay attention to this part, 
right? You're, you're reading it and you've maybe read it a hundred times, but this time he says, like, you really need to focus on this particular phrase or verse or word. And so then at that point, you just say, okay, write down the scripture that stands out to you. And then the O stands for observations. That means you look at it and you just go, why would he say it this way? Or what is actually being happening right here? Or, and, and you just make simple observations about the scripture that stands out to you. And then the A stands for application. That's when you look at yourself and you go, okay, if I were to start walking this out in my day-to-day -day life, what would that look like? Meaning, if I were to start living out the kingdom principles or the Jesus way in my day-to-day -day life, what would I do based on this passage? And then the P, to wrap up your time, stands for prayer. You make these observations, this scripture and these applications, you make them a prayer. For instance, if you're to read the passage, love your enemies, that's a really important thing to start praying. God, help me learn to love my enemies the way that you did. Help me to learn how to not hold things against people, but actually in forgiveness experience, freedom. You know, so you, you turn these applications and scriptures into your prayers. And so on a personal level, that's how I would do the devotion time and try it for 21 days because you might create a habit that allows you to keep engaging after this time as well. But here's something in your neighborhood that I think would be really powerful. See, we can't gather together as a church body, but think of how awesome this is. Every one of us is in our neighborhood right now. If Jesus could make an impact on every neighborhood, you know what he would do? He would send Christians to every neighborhood. You know where you are? Your neighborhood. So here's what can happen. You can just start doing prayer walks in your neighborhood and you could keep it simple you could just as you're walking your dog or whatever you're just as you're going around just start praying lord help this house or if you know the person you could say god help them do this thing and and i would even as you get more comfortable with this every neighbor that's touching your house i want to challenge you go to them and pray for them directly We've provided door hangers to begin that conversation or begin that invitation. But here's what that could look like. You go knock on their door um, and then stand six feet away when they open it, right? <laughs> and then you just say, hey, how can I pray for you? Is there anything going on that, that I could pray for? And then you take your journal, you write it down. And then that next week you come back to them and you say, hey, I've been praying for you this week about this thing. How's that going? And then... As they come up with new prayer requests, you write those things down and you just commit. I'm going to pray for every one of my neighbors that is touching my house. And then see what God does on their behalf because you've decided that I'm going to intercede. That's a biblical word that this means I'm going to be praying specifically for them in this moment. And just see how God opens up or opens up doors for you to engage or opens up doors in their lives as well. So I want to challenge you. Do the soap journal thing. Make your personal devotion time a priority. Make your neighborhood your mission. Go on prayer walks. Pray for your neighbors. Find ways so that they could see the light of Christ in your life. And again, all, a lot of resources are available on the app or um, on our website, CompassionChristian.com backslash 21 days. We want to give you that as an opportunity uh, to engage and figure out, okay, I'm taking my walk with Jesus to the next level. And after 21 days, I want to be different than I am right now. That's possible. That, that, that can happen as long as you're pursuing him. All right. And so here's what I want to do. I want to wrap up our time. Uh, and I just love to pray for us uh, because, um, again, We've, we've started this journey of praying together. And so as I pray, um, I'm not going to rush it. So I want to encourage you, uh, don't rush it either. And, and as we pray, just uh, follow me as I lead us. Okay, so here we go. Let's pray together. Father, we are so thankful for your grace. We're thankful that not only are you active in our lives and in our world, but you are actively pursuing a relationship with each and every one of us. And Father, right now, um, as we think about relationship with you and we think about um, maybe some of the things 
that are in the way. We want to say, Spirit, reveal those things to us right now. Even in your own heart and mind, you can say that prayer for yourself. Spirit, reveal things in my life that are getting in the way of my relationship with you. Spirit, let your word be like a mirror where we begin to see ourselves more clearly uh, and we can begin to let go of the things that are keeping us from running after you. Over these 21 days, we, we want to let go of that. We want to be different. And so I ask your blessing in that. We even want to say we're open to it. You know, a lot of us have resisted that. We don't, we don't like change sometimes. We don't like to be challenged. Uh, we don't like dealing with hard things um, but right now, I, I think more than ever, we're open to you showing up in power and changing things in our lives. And so um, we're thankful again that because of your grace, you are near, you are at work. Um, Father, there are people in our lives that don't know you. And even as I'm saying that, I've got a few friends that just came to mind. And, and for anybody who's a part of this, picture those people that are in your circle. They're your friends, they're your family, they're your co-workers or classmates or roommates. And, and begin to pray on their behalf. Like picture them right now and ask that Jesus would do something in their life in the next three weeks. Jesus, give me a chance to engage uh, my neighbors, to, to engage my, my buddies that I'm, I'm picturing right now, because I just think if they knew you, if they knew that life in you is the best version of human living possible, if they knew that, God, they would, everything would change for them. And I feel like you've put me, I feel like everybody who's participating in this, you've put us in a position to help our world see how good you are. So God, have mercy. Let us, let us put aside everything that hinders us so that we can introduce people to your love, introduce people to forgiveness that is available through you. And more than anything, not just the stuff that is possible because of you, but we want them to know you. We want them to experience you, life in relationship with you, Jesus. Father, we think about what seems like an impossible situation right now. That we sit here all very aware that we have no control over this virus. We have no control over what tomorrow holds. We have no control um, over what happens next. And so we want to walk in the freedom of trusting you with those things. I would imagine that many of us participating in this right now are in the same boat I am where you're bringing me back to this lesson that I feel like I keep coming back to of, do you trust me now? Do you trust me in this place? Do you trust me through this situation? And um, like that father said from the word, you know, he was like, I, I do believe, I do trust, but help my unbelief. Help, help those places where I am lacking in my ability to trust you with all things. We're so thankful that you're gracious and you're compassionate and you're slow to anger because in, in all of that, you meet us where we're at and you walk with us and you lead us in your way. You help us to do the things we cannot do on our own. So God, thank you for that. For the next 21 days, I pray that we keep our eyes open to what you have in store. Keep our ears open to what you are saying to us and our hearts open to becoming like you. 
Father, we, we love you. We trust you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus through the power of your spirit. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Blessings on you as we begin this journey of 21 days in prayer.